Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today on Fight to Win, we're going to talk about how to quit expecting calamity and start expecting the goodness of God. And I'm actually going to teach you how you can do that. And in today's tactical tip, I'm going to teach you how to throw an elbow. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Today I want to teach you about a close in strike or at least show you one to teach you. We'd have to break it down a little bit more, but it's going to actually start with my feet. There's going to be a rotation where my, the ball of my foot is going to turn and my hip is going to go forward, but this is going to be a forward elbow. And the way this is going to work, I don't want to make a fist because it'll slow me down. I don't want to throw an elbow like this. I want to open it up. And I want so that it, it's moving quicker. I'm not tensed up. And what I'm trying to hit with is this part of my arm so that when I'm making contact, I'm hitting it. Now, here's the thing. It is a close in strike. It's not, it's not a way. Distancing is a big thing in fighting. You need to know your distance. Because if I try to throw that same strike here, notice how everything's working together. I'm going to miss. So this is when somebody's like pressing into my personal space. They tried to grab me and, and I want to hit them. Now, what I'm not trying to do is shove them. If you notice the bag is not swinging a lot, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't because if I push it and it swings, I'm not really making impact. I want to hit to all the forces inside here. And again, um, I can cut them. One of the things that happens sometimes if you hit people across the eye bridge, it actually will cut cut them in blood and, and that actually keeps them from seeing and it gives you a chance to run away. But this is called a forward elbow. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. We've been talking about how to walk by faith and teaching it extremely practically. Um, at least I hope you think it's practical. And I, and I am going to synopsize everything and stuff, but I'm trying to break down the important components. And again, I don't necessarily look at these things as steps. I look at these things more as a recipe, even though I think starting with the promise is a step. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to our YouTube channel or go to KurtOwen.com and rewatch some of the broadcasts. And, or if you haven't watched it at all, listen and watch and receive. Because the whole point of these broadcasts is to disciple you because we love you because God loves you. And so we're trying to get these truths down on the inside of you. But we've been talking about how to walk by faith, how to, that you actually do it. Instead of just saying, have faith, come on brother, walk by faith. What do I do? What does it look like? How do we put it into practice? And so we found over in Hebrews uh, 11, 12, where it says, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And so basically, which means find somebody that did it and received and it worked for them and then do what they did. So that's what we've been doing. But we've been doing it over here in Romans chapter four, where God actually gave us a picture of what Abraham did, the father of our faith and what he did to receive from God. And so what we've been doing is we've been going down through this line upon line so that we can take notes and find out what he did, get our recipe working, and then we're going to go do what he did. Now, hopefully, even in the midst of what we've done so far, that if, if even right now you're in the middle of a situation, you found some things that you could apply and put into practice. Now, even in this series of broadcasts, uh, and I, this is going to go four weeks, and so even in that, I'm not going to be able to say everything that I, I could say. And so I want to remind you that you can go to KurtOwen.com and get this product absolutely free. It is our free offer uh, during the series called How to Walk by Faith. There's 19 hours of teaching on here that the partners of Kurt Owen Ministries and I 
can want to give in to your life and so into your life. You know, that's one of the things when you become a partner with this ministry, it should be fairly obvious uh, where your partnership goes, right? Because uh, one, you're watching this on television and that costs money. And then we're mailing out thousands of these, uh, which obviously costs money. E- honestly, even when we send it uh, via the website and stuff, people don't understand that some, we get charged for downloads, we get charged for um, accessing the site. and but you partners, you're the one that making that possible. And that doesn't include all the missions work we do around the world and all the places that we go. So partners, once again, thank you. And every person whose life will be changed during this series, you're making possible. So, and even if you're not a partner, even if you don't feel like you don't have anything to give, the partners and I want to get this to you because we believe that these teachings will change your life forever if you'll take them and put them into practice. So, Let's go back down through this in Romans chapter four. And we start, even though verse 16, once again, is not part of it. It is something people say, why do you say the same things every day? To be honest, because sometimes people only catch one or two broadcasts a week. And even though I encourage you to go back and listen to them, people don't. And I have to tell you, you need to change that. You need to make up your mind when you're hearing truths that you have to get a hold of, that you go back and you listen to them at least seven times. Because you need to get the, get your Bible out. Now, the first time, just listen to it. And I'll just give you a tip here, okay? The first time, just listen to it. Get a grasp on what I'm saying. The second time, sit down with your Bible, and even if it takes you a little while, right? Because... You know, I know people get busy and, but if it takes you a little bit and uh, you'll sit down and let's say I only get through 10 minutes of the broadcast today, right? And so I sit down and I'm reading from Romans chapter four. What I would do is for, if I was you and I said, we're going to look at Romans four sixteen. What I would do is, is I would stop the recording right there and I would read uh, Romans four sixteen before I said anything about it. Okay, then after I read that verse, then I would actually go back and read the entire chapter of Romans four. After I read the entire chapter of Romans four, then I'd hit plus plus play on the recording. Okay, and I do that for every scripture that I read. That's that. That's a way that you can. People always say, I don't know where to get started. That's an easy way for you to get started. Now, that's only your that's your second playthrough. Right. First time you don't first time you don't. Um, do anything. You just listen. Okay. Second time, sit down with your Bible, read it for yourself. Once you get through with your second playthrough, sit down the third time, do the exact same thing, but start taking notes. And people say, well, are, I mean, you want me to sit down and go through my Bible again? You want me to read the chapters again? Yes. Yes. You know, I'm trying to read through the Bible, the, my Bible reading program. I read through the Old Testament once a year and through the New Testament twice a year. And so what I, I, I'm constantly feeding on these things, at least I'm endeavoring to. And that's going to be important in your life, especially as you see we go along. Now, again, we are going to, as I said, we're going to repeat the fact that we're going to look at Romans 4, uh, 4, 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. That it, here's another way of saying it, that it might be sure to you. It is a faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise could be sure to you. Make this personal. God wants you to receive from him. Now, he goes on here and he says this, um, verse 17, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Now, if there is a step in this process, this is the first, this is a step. Get the word of God on what your problem is. Remember your homework right now. Your homework is that you are to identify your three biggest problems in your life and then go get three scriptures that cover that problem. And again, if you can't don't know those scriptures, contact us and we'll help you with it. But folks, please don't just sit there and listen to me and not do what I'm teaching. Please sit down with you. I, I'm begging you. 
identify your three biggest problems and then get three scriptures for each problem and start feeding on those every day. I'll, I'll tell you more to do with it later on. But right now, do that. There's people over there. I just, I wish somebody would disciple me. I'm trying. I'm trying. But part of what you need to do is do what I'm teaching you. And please quit making excuses. Okay? Please stop. Stop. Your life is at stake. Please quit making excuses and just start doing what I'm teaching you. I love you. Even when I'm calling you a numbskull, I love you. I want you to quit being a numbskull. I'd like for me to quit being a numbskull. But we've got to start doing these truths that we're studying. Okay? Now, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Faith starts with a promise. No promise, no real faith. People say, no, I disagree with that. Okay, then how do you deal with faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Literally, I, I, I like to look at that verse as faith is empowered by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because you actually have faith. Jesus gave it to you. It is God's faith himself. That's the reason that it's the whole armor of God and we have the shield of faith. Whose armor is it? It's God. So it's God's faith. And with that faith, you truly can quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. If you're, if you're sitting there saying, um, well, I don't have time to walk by faith because uh, I, you just don't understand what I'm dealing with. Let me, let me just say this to you. And, and I'm gonna, we're going to look at this just real quick over here in Ephesians. But, but let me say this to you. Whatever you're dealing with, if faith is not a part of it, you are only applying a temporary solution. You will have to deal with your problem again. And whatever method you're using, whatever it is that you're utilizing, at some point it will hit its limit. And I've said this before on the broadcast, but I'm encouraging you right now. If you're using your intellect to get through life, at some point it'll hit its limit. If you're using your finances to get through life, at some point it'll hit its limit. If you're using strength to get through life, at some point it'll hit its limit. But notice here what it says about faith. And this is in Ephesians chapter 4. And um, uh, this is verse 16. And above all, take, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. See, faith will deliver you in all things. Faith will preserve and protect you in all things, not just some things. And it is time to quit living life by temporary solutions. It's time. It's time. Okay? So again, go back. Listen to the broadcasts. Go back and, and do that. Now, let's go back over here. As it is written, I've made you the father of many nations. Find out what God said about your problem. That's the reason for your homework, right? In the presence of him right there, you need to understand, you need to develop your personal intimate relationship with God. If you only go to God in times of trouble, you're going to have trouble actually releasing your faith in times of trouble. Why? Because I do believe there's a part of us that understands when we call people only when we're in trouble. Think of it this way. If you have a friend that the only time you ever call them is when you need something, there is a part of you when you call them the next time that thinks, you know, I should have been talking to them this whole time. I mean, they, when I call them, they're going to know I need something because that's the only time I call them. And there's this self-condemnation that goes on on the inside of ourselves. And, and I don't want that for you. Have a living relationship with God so that you do not permit condemnation to enter in. Now, let me be clear. God is not like me. Okay, me, if you only call me when you need something, at some point I'm going to quit taking the call. Okay, probably. I don't know. I can be kind of soft-hearted sometimes. But God never quits taking the call. But there is a part of us that disconnects because we beat ourselves up 
because of that. that. That's one of the things that, you know, we have a series called Knowing and Believing the Love of God. That is so important. That, that talks about you and your intimate relationship with God. Now, I don't have anything to show you, but I would encourage you to go to KurtOwen.com and get Knowing and Believing the Love of God. And again, if you don't have any money, we'll give it to you. But you need to work on your intimate relationship with God. Now, there are some things in the pro- this product that talk about that because this is, but you need to get in the presence of God. And this, this teaching that we're giving away free at KurtOwen.com, you take this teaching. People say, why do you keep pushing these things on us? Because folks, 30 minutes a day isn't going to do it. You need to wash your mind with the water of the Word of God. And so every day, I tell you several times a day about product. And folks, I'm not trying to get money from you. I'd like for you to support the ministry, but I'm not doing it to sell it to you. It's because we believe in what we're teaching and we want you to have it. Now, let's go on. He goes on and he says, in the presence of him, you've got to get to know the God that promised, right? In the presence of him whom he believed, you're going to have, at some point, you're going to have to make the decision to believe, okay? I, I'm going to talk more about that later, but I, I really am confounded sometimes when people think that there's just some people who just can't doubt. No, doubts show up and then we answer them by choosing to believe God. Now, it goes on in the presence of him whom he believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. We've covered those things you're going to have to get to the place where you, if, even if something looks dead, well, so let me back up. You've got to realize that God is God, right? You've got to realize that um, he can give life to a dead situation and will. You've got to realize how he does things. He's going to give you his word. He's going to, expe- he's going to speak his word. He's going to expect you to speak his word. He calls those, speaks these things as, as, though, they de- as though they exist, okay? Now, he goes on and he says this. And this is where we've been uh, meditating. Who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Again, again, this hope, his expectancy was based on what was spoken. He had a promise. This is the reason you've got to get that promise down on the inside of you. Because how are you going to hope contrary to hope? When you have no reason to hope, how are you going to hope anyway? The only way to do that is by getting found, founded and, and, and grounded in the Word of God. That's it. Why should I hope when, when it's never worked before? How can I, you know, going back to Abraham, we've been trying to have kids for decades and haven't been able to handle it. What makes you think you can have a kids now? Because now I have a promise, not a wish, not a, I think this would be great, not a need, not even a desire. I have a promise. I have a God that spoke to me and said that I could have this. I have a promise. So even though I have no reason to hope, I'm going to hope anyway. And again, I, I, you know, I, I've gone over this. I don't know how many broadcasts now, but here's the thing. People, people like to come up with situations that they somehow think God can't do it. And they are so hopeless that even God can't give them hope. And that is a deception It is also a victim mentality that you like being a victim. And I would cut that out. It sucks to be a victim. You need to stop. You need to quit giving your destiny into the hands of other people and the hands of the devil and the hands of economies and the hands of doctors. You need to take back control of your destiny. And the way to do that is by taking the word of God that God has already promised. He's already told you the destiny that he desires for you. He's already told you the good that he wants to do for you. And you need to start expecting that 
Yeah, but it's never happened. I know it's hopeless. So you need to go contrary to natural hope in hope, believe anyway, in expecting. People say, why do you keep saying hope expectancy, hope expectancy? I've explained it, but let me give you a couple scriptures. Okay, go with me to Proverbs chapter 10. And again, hope, Bible hope is to expect in a positive direction. Now, uh, it's not wishing. Most people, when they say wish or say hope, they mean wish. Um, are you going to get a precision rifle for Christmas, Kurt? I hope so. I'm not really expecting a precision rifle for Christmas. I, it'd be nice if I got one, but if I said right now, I hope I get one, I would be saying, I wish I would get one, but I really have no expect expectancy. My wife probably would get me one if we had the resources. The thing of it is, is not, not just counting the resources. She doesn't know enough to, to go buy one, right? She's not a, a gun bunny. But here in Proverbs 10, and um, we're going to be down in verse 28, it says this, the hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the, ex but the expectation of the wicked will perish. You see how it's using those words there? Let's look at it again. The hope of the righteous will perish, or, uh, will perish, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Did I say, I said that wrong. Let me go back. Okay, I'm reading it and got it wrong. Okay, so the hope of the righteous will be gladness. In other words, they will receive what they are expecting but the expectation of the wicked will perish. In other words, they will not receive what they are expecting. Sorry, I messed that scripture up. Okay. But I mean, it happens. Um, the other day in France, I was in France doing a minister's conference. This is kind of funny. Um, I was teaching on Luke four. Okay. And I teach an entire service on Luke four, but there was a problem. At the beginning, and I mean, it was a large passage of scripture. It was like 15 verses, okay, T 10 verses. The problem was at the beginning, I said, to, I made a mistake and said to my translator, we're going to be in Mark chapter four. And so he reads Mark chapter four to all the ministers, but I teach from Luke chapter four. And so now I don't know it because he's speaking in French and I don't speak French. And so I'm teaching all this stuff and people are like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? And I didn't know it till the end of the service when somebody comes up and says, Pastor, I, I believe you are teaching from Luke 4, not Mark 4. And I'm like, yeah, I was teaching from Luke 4. Yes, but you said Mark 4. Yeah, it was pretty embarrassing. Well, honestly, it wasn't embarrassing. I, I didn't care. I felt bad for the people. But I mean, those things happen. You're, and this is, the, you know, this should help you, right? Here I am on TV right now, and I was reading a scripture, and I wasn't even reading it, and I made a mistake. But yet I'm still sitting here on TV. I was in France, and I made a huge mistake, and yet I'm still in the ministry. What, why are you afraid of making mistakes before stepping out following God? You're going to make mistakes. I've been doing this a long time. I make mistakes. Quit worrying about making mistakes and get on with the plan of God for your life. Don't you understand Jesus is bigger than your mistakes? Jesus is bigger than what if you mess, I bet I might mess up. Oh, no, honey, no, might about it. You will. You will. I'm on television right now. I'm on national television and I just messed up. You're going to mess up. But Jesus is bigger than your mistakes. Quit disqualifying yourself. Allow the love and the power of God to be your qualifier. Now, let's go back and let's see if I can read it correctly. The hope of the righteous will be gladness. But the expectation of the wicked will perish. Do you see there where the Bible is using hope and expectation interchangeably. 
Now, people say, yeah, but that's only for the righteous. That's only for the righteous. Yeah, but if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who you are. But so when I say who contrary to hope in hope believe, and I say that hope is expectation, that's where I get that from. Also, let me see if it's in 11 because we're right here. Yeah, 11, um, 7. Okay. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish, and the hope of the unjust perishes. Again, they're used interchangeably. Now, I used to say that hope was just expectation, but really hope is positive expectation, whereas fear or worry would be negative expectation. You know, worry, um, when you're worrying and you're thinking like something's going to happen, that's an expectation as well. You, uh, You know, I remember several years ago, I had so many things going wrong in my life that it got to be that every time the phone rang, I dreaded answering the phone because I knew it was going to be another problem on the end of that line. And I got to be where I just didn't want to answer the phone. So I had an expectation, a a true expectation. I honestly, it took me about a year or so. And even sometimes now I have to watch it that when the phone rings from the office, it's like, oh God, what are we dealing with today? Oh Lord Jesus, please help. Right? You have to, you have to deal with your own expectation. You have to be honest about yourself, about what you, with yourself, about what you're expecting. And you have to change that. Okay. Now you're going to need help. And so when I come back, I want to pray with you about God revealing to you where you're expecting calamity rather than the goodness of God. Come right back. I want to pray with you. Put your faith into action and recognize God's power in your life. Learn to trust God in every situation, knowing He will guide you into His will and purpose for your life in this powerful teaching series from Pastor Kurt Owen. We're offering this series on USB as our free gift to you. Order yours today on our website, fighttowin.tv, or by calling 1-800-215-0428. You know, sometimes life is beating you up and beating you down so bad that all oh, you're, you're like me with the telephone. I'm only expecting bad. It's time to stop that. It's time to begin to hope, to have a positive expectancy that the God that is completely in love with you will fulfill his word to you. And let that word create hope, positive expectancy on the inside of yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. And Lord, we set ourselves in agreement today that you will reveal to us where we have been expecting destruction, that we, where we have been expecting pain. And Lord, we ask you by your spirit to expose that to us. And Lord, now we make a change rather than expecting calamity. Lord, we expect the goodness of God in the land of the living and your word to be fulfilled in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Kurt Owen. This is Fight to Win. Come back tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured.